Test, test, are we live? Are we live on RPG Limit Break? I think we're live. Countess says we're live, so we're live. Unless they're really trying to troll me. But yeah, welcome everybody. It's my great, great pleasure to be participating in DQRTA Marathon for the first time. Uh, my... I guess, <laughs> depends on your perspective. My favorite game to speedrun on the NES is Dragon Warrior 2. Granted, it is one of the... I guess it, it's so weird because it's both one of the most fair and most unfair speedruns on the Nintendo. And I say that because the game, I mean, there's RNG in everything, but the RNG in this is just absolute chaos. But what I really like, in addition to the fact that it's the shortest non-manipulated speedrun, is that there's a really high skill cap. And we are constantly running things on a razor's edge uh, to try and beat this game as quickly as possible. And yeah, the game can troll you whenever it wants, but you can mitigate that trolling by executing strategies. And the strategies in this are just so very, very dynamic. They're constantly changing depending on circumstance. And I like to think that I've carved out a nice little strategy for this game. Normally when we're speedrunning this to try and get a PB or a world record, we're just running around with our hair on absolute fire. But I've tried to, you know, make some adjustments to consistently do this for a marathon setting and beat the game in a reasonable amount of time. So I hope to show off some of those things and kind of show you, talk about what happens in a world record run, what happens in a marathon run, and what chaos just happens in this particular marathon run. All right. So my last save file was called Iverson because we were just talking about practice, but this is the real deal. So we are going to name our hero DQRTA. And we'll have to see, uh, the name of the Prince of Kanak and the Princess of Moonbrook are dependent on what our hero name is. So we're gonna have to see which ones we get. We are gonna have to see. Thanks, Skylander. Welcome everybody else. Appreciate it. This should be a good time. We got- we, well, let's get started. We got time to chat. We got a three-hour opening. <laughs> three hour, three minute opening cutscene to sit through. All right, let's go. Three, two, one, bam! All right. So this game, unlike Dragon Warrior Three, actually takes place after Dragon Warrior One, which we just saw the dob do. Uh, so we got two or three generations have passed since Dragon Warrior One, and a new evil has set a foot in the land. Uh, this evil is what is known to us as Hargon, some evil guy who's uh, making the Dragon Lord's grandson look bad by being more evil than him. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll get to explore that little side plot line later. Yeah, we're in the Kingdom of Moonbrook. Everything's fine until Hargon attacks. And I'm going to speed through the dialogue a little quick, but there's some really, really good dialogue in this scene. Uh, just, it's really well written. Alright, they're trying to protect themselves, but nope. Gremlin sneak attack. The gremlins are apparently very good at critical hits as well. Yeah, I'm running on, this is on an emulator. Alright. <laughs> oh, such a babe, brave beauty. Touch her and thou shalt not survive this day. Thou must be the lord of this miserable sandcastle, but I think not for long. And boom. No.
So the castle is completely overrun now, and no one is going to escape except for one brave guard. The brave guard who tries to smack this gremlin from behind. I mean, if they're going to sneak attack you, you can sneak attack them. It only makes sense. So, gravely wounded, this soldier is going to walk all the way to the kingdom of Maidenhall to tell the king there what is up. And the king is basically going to say, I'm too old for this, and gets, gets his son to do it. But that's neither here nor there. We got another, another good dialogue coming up that I quite enjoy. Blah. Thy wound looks serious. What has happened to thee? Never mind me. I have evil tidings that cannot wait. It's very intense. <laughs> Feels dead king, man. Alright. Hear me, O king, the army of Hargon has sacked Moonbrook from whence I came. His power is great, and we will all die unless someone as strong as thee saves us all. Like I mentioned, the king says, I'm too old for this, so, son, you're also from the bloodline of Erdrick, you can do it. And seek out companions in Kanak and Moonbrook, they will help you. So we get our lovely Copper Sword. That Copper Sword is going to do some serious work for the next 30-40 minutes or so. So, first RNG point of the game, we get lucky. Anytime you buy something from a shop, there's a 1 in 6 chance you get a lottery ticket. And that lottery ticket sells for 53 gold. And gold in the early game is absolutely critical. Our goal is to try and get all the keys in the game as quickly as possible. Oh, there's another lottery ticket, so that's fantastic. So trying to get all the keys as quickly as possible so we can exploit a trick to get a lot of gold really quick. So this is actually nice uh, with the, those two lottery tickets. I will be able to afford a little armor upgrade, which will make the next part of the run safer. And so like I mentioned, this game's all about running around with your hair on fire. And so in a world record attempt, we would not be doing any of this grinding. We would be rushing through the first cave of the game at level 1. Because any experience we get now, in theory, would be wasted experience because none of the other characters are getting it. So you want to get your characters as quickly as possible, but... There are many risks associated with that. And so... Just something as simple as getting level 2 gives us about 9 or 10 experience points. And note, there are no manipulations in this run. In fact, uh, the category name is... So, any percent no RNG nips. I'm not sure if that's on the screen or not, but that's, that's what the category I'm running is. Which makes this game pretty darn crazy. So I'm just sticking around this starting area. I can get level 2 quickly enough. Uh, even going to like the zone to the side is tricky when you ha only have one character because you get a group of three monsters, they're punching you for three damage each, and you uh, may not one-shot them, so it's better to get this first level here and then work on it from there. Right, there we go. Level 2. Just like that. There's our nice big 9 HP gain. Let's use our medical herb, and we will head over to the town of Leftwind. Leftwind, whatever you want to call it. It's left, and that's why it has its name. So right now, I am just trying to save up enough money to get this uh, leather shield, which costs 90 gold got my extra lottery ticket in tow, so I should have enough. Yeah, 
57, I got plenty. Plenty of money. Oh, see? Even at level 2, sometimes you don't one-shot these enemies. No worries. And as you can see, we're going last, which is not uncommon. There are three things that are for sure in this world. And it's Death Paxes and Maidenhall going last. Alright, so, you know, if we did this at level 1, we would have ran out of HP. Let us sell our lottery ticket, maybe buy another herb, and then we will get our leather shield. Right, so I can get I can get an herb, and I can get an antidote. Because we do encounter some babbles along the way, potentially. So, just to be super safe. And although we're taking a little bit of extra time, we really do get a benefit from this, in that it will help our leveling once we get the Prince of Kami. There we go, we go from 8 to 12 defense. 50% increase. You may say it's only 4 defense, but sometimes it makes a difference of something hitting you from 3 to hitting to 1 instead. That's a pretty big deal. So there's this whole little plot arc we need to go through before we get the Prince of Kanak. The only hint we get from our king back home, our daddy, is to get uh, go to Kanak. And the king here is like, oh, my son already left, so please find him. And if we talk around, we find out that he headed over to the Shrine or Spring of Bravery. So that is where we are headed next. So away we go. With my leather shield and my herbs, should be able to fight a little bit to get a level. And well, apparently I don't need it if I'm just not going to get any encounters. <laughs> All right, let's we'll see if we can fight this. This one will be, it'll be close, but I can always use an herb. It's basically <laughs> going to increase my experience so far by like, 70%, so it's worth it. Uh, running in this game is really, really sketchy. Basically, every run attempt, doesn't matter if it's a blue slime or the stronger enemies in the game, the chance of running is 2 out of 3 every single time. There we go. Alright, level 3. Five more power and three more HP. We love to see it. Let's go. Hm. Ah, why not? Oh, come on. I still can't one-shot him. Those jerks. Boom. Come on, Maidenhall, I believe in you. I believe. So yeah, this group of enemies right here, if uh, you were at level 1 and your run failed twice... Oh, interesting. My timer is being a jerk, isn't it? Are you using my timer or are you using your own timer? Because I can fix that. can fix that. I tried to use a Dragon Quest font package, but it appears to not like me very much. Okay, you do see the dots? Alright. I'll get in there. I'll fix it. Maybe that's just what a zero looks like. <laughs> okay. 
There we go. Yeah, it was just the font. So be it. Alright, level four. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. But such is life. So we're at the Spring of Bravery, and it's asking us if we've seen the prince, and he says, no, he just left. So the prince is playing a game of hide and seek with us. So at this point, we could death warp, we could try and get out of here. We'll, we'll see, we'll play it by ear. We have a bit of gold with us, which I wouldn't mind keeping, but it's obviously a bit slow. You get a lot of encounters. So we'll just fight stuff, we'll see what happens. I mean, we can cut through stuff like butter at this point. I guess I only have 50 gold, huh? Like I mentioned, gold is incredibly valuable at the start of the game. And plus, I mean, we just get the satisfaction of saying we're not dying. As much as y'all would like to see cold as a cod, we'll see plenty of that later. Aha! Take that! No! Speedrun this game just once, you'll understand that uh, yelling at the screen is, is a big part of the speedrun. It's a critical part of speedrunning. Alright. What do we got? One Draki, get out of here. So I guess that uh, brings up an interesting point. So. Experience in this game works kind of weird. So there is a base multiplier. I guess there's the base experience that every enemy gives you. And to find out how much experience you get, you basically add all that base experience up. But then it's multiplied by a factor that's based on how many enemies started the battle. Basically, every additional enemy you get more than one adds 10% experience to your count. So if an enemy was worth 4, well you'd think 2 of them was worth 8. But you actually multiply it by 10% to get 8.8, .8, which rounds up to 9. <laughs> so 1 is 4, but 2 is 9. And then 3 would be 12... Uh, ...times 1.2. <laughs> which would be 13 point... whatever. Which would get rounded up to 14. So it goes 4, 9, 14. Alright. Now the game just wants to throw encounters at me. It's punishing me for my indiscretions. I'm going to give you the maximum possible time loss. But we don't care. A few minutes here and there is no big deal. Everything pretty much comes down to the end of the game anyway. Yo, High Spirits in the house! How you doing, High Spirits? <laughs> yeah, the uh, music in this game is pretty great, and... Actually, even better if you put it at 1.5 times speed. So good. Yeah, so it's, it's very interesting. The, that multiplier. Like, for example, well, first of all, you'll see it in the future, but... Metal enemies in this game are just absolute garbage. They are, like, the biggest trap in the game. For example, a Metal Babel in this is only worth 1050 experience. But if you...
a metal babble, and seven healers. Up to like 1800. Even though the healers are just kind of useless, right? It's very interesting. Alright. So, we got the prince now. And our main priority is getting the prince to level 3 to learn the spell Fireball, which will help us deal with some of the stronger enemies on the way to the next town. Oh, healer's gonna heal. Okay. And the nice thing is, with the hero at level 5, we can basically one-shot everything that's not uh, a babble. So, our Prince Lars is gonna just carry and sit there and reap the rewards. So it's kind of neat. The Castle of Kanak is right on the center of four different zones. And this top left zone has a lot of wild mice and babbles and they give really nice experience. Especially when the multiplier comes into play. Same deal here. At early levels, Lars might be in danger, but now we can just parry. And let the hero do the work. You know, technically they're all heroes, but I always view like Mayanal as being the number one hero. Mayanal carries this, this run pretty hard. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, still didn't quite one-shot the babel. And unfortunately the AI was a little bit dumb, and my characters attacked separate ones, but what can you do? Beautiful. 26 experience, so good. And just like that, in three fights, we get two levels, and we get our fireball spell. We'll just do a couple other fights to get one more level. Just to get a little bit more magic, because sometimes resources can be tight, just because sometimes the encounter rate goes absolutely bonkers. Yeah, Masochist Paradise. And so that's why I've, I've had a lot of fun kind of working on this marathon route. And I've, I've found, like, taking these extra safety measures, it, it, it's like a initial time loss, but it makes everything so much easier and, frankly, quite faster later on. So it's not as bad as it seems. Ooh, free herb, please. Yoink! Yeah, that's how Dragon Quest 2 is, for sure. So yeah, sometimes you get four encounters in six steps, and then sometimes you go through a whole loop of the song. One more battle after this, and we should have our level four. Oh, another herb. Sweet. Again, that's, that's 15 gold in my pocket. Ah, they switched. They switched again. Those dummies. Good. Nice. Alright, everything's fine. Hey, Joshi. I've been looking forward to it, too. Beautiful. Oh, two levels. Great. Even better. Even better. Alright. So I guess we have so much money because of our strategies that we can just buy some extra stuff right now. And everything's fine. 
69 gold. Nice. Right. And one more herb. Great. So we'll just hop into the inn here, and then we will head over to the town of Hamlin, where we're going to find the Princess Moonbrook in the form of a dog. Why Hargon didn't fully dispose of her, nobody knows, but thankfully for us, we can fix things. Alright, so once we enter this cave, which we actually can't even pass through until we get the prince, uh, we get a much stronger selection of enemies, like magicians who can cast fireball on us, centipods, which are super tanky, Big rats, which hit hard in focus fire. Big cobras, which are kind of annoying. Oh, and more babbles, apparently. Go get them, Lars. Let's see what we get here. There goes Lars. Focusing on the wrong enemy again. Next step encounter. You'll love to see it. Oh, army ants. So these... Every Dragon Quest game seems to have one enemy that's just, like, weirdly imbalanced. And in this game, army ants are one of them. Like, they can call for help. They have a reasonable amount of HP, but they're just, like, worth no experience and no gold. It's just bizarre. I need to get one fight here. Please and thank you. <laughs> so you get an encounter on consecutive steps, then we literally went through a loop of the song. There we go. And we get four magicians. Fantastic. So, this one can be trolly if they decide to, you know, all focus fireballs on the same character. Okay. I think we should be fine. And fine we are. But just barely. have to heal because we're right next to the town. Beautiful. Yeah, I needed that little bit of gold to afford the inn. That was a nice quick walk. And here we see this strange little dog here. When we talk to them, follows us around. And we find out... Uh, if we went to the ruined castle of Moonbrook, we'd find a spirit that tells us what's up. Alright. Ooh, nice. So, this little zone we're in is pretty darn dangerous. We encounter some pretty strong enemies, namely baboons. But we got really lucky and we found the enemies that aren't as strong, but are worth a boatload of experience. Yeah, 77 experience. We'd love to see it. Love to see it. Oh, we got smokes. They're worth a lot of gold. And gold is king. see dragons for a fair bit, and when we see them, we really don't want to see them. Ooh, that's mean. Go get him, Lars! 
Lars came to play today. Love to see it. So there's the castle of Moonbrick just to our west, but we are headed to a different type of swamp. And this swamp has the Mirror of Ra, which, ooh, interest. Risk reward? Risk reward? Ah, we're asleep. <laughs> all right, we're awake. And, oh, we're not all asleep. Good job, Lars. Beautiful. This will be worth like 100 experience. It's great. No! <laughs> Man, DQRTA is one sleepy fella today. Beautiful. Hey, there's my nice big nine power level. That helps a lot. Great. Just pop another herb. Hey. Nah, that's too many of the smokes. They can use stop spell, and my only way to kill them quickly is to use fireball, so that's just a time sink. Just a time sink. Correct. Stat gains in this are fixed. So I know exactly what I'm going to get. Okay, let's get us a princess. Princess Puppy Dog. Alright, sub 30 Moonbrook. I am happy with that. Beautiful. So now that we've got our, our full party, our goal is to get the princess to level 4 at 600 experience as quickly as possible, and then she is going to start carrying us with the Inferno spell. Honestly, like, the, as far as character quality in this, you've got Maidenhall right at the top. Then you got Moonbrook, not honestly too far in second place. And then you've got Kanak, a very distant third. Kanak is really only good for this little bit of the early game. Alright, we can fight this. It's kind of annoying because I can't really use my um, fire magic on healers. But it's worth like 110 experience, so I'm just gonna just gonna take it. Plus, the healers will just always heal the zombie. Until there's no zombie left. Beautiful. Alright. So, long fight, but safe fight. <laughs> Anik has a very important vital role in getting hit and killed, <laughs> and not our other characters. Makes sense. Alright, 1-1-1 one, one, one experience, taking advantage of that 30% multiplier from a 4 enemy battle. Beautiful. Alright. Love to see it. And even at level 2, Moonbrook starts being super awesome. Sleep spell is incredibly valuable, because these more dangerous enemies, they do have the potential to troll us, and sleep is really effective against most of them, so... It's just fantastic to have. It's not even like a meat shield, it's more like a sponge shield, Zatoriak.
パッパッパッパッパー Big rats. First time we've seen them. Not too special, they're not worth that much experience, but they will focus fire on a character. Uh, there are several enemies in this game that have that AI. So it's kind of annoying. And rather than try and run and you fail to run, you can fail to run infinitely many times. You fail to run a few times, they start focusing a, a character down and it just gets all messy. Yeah, there's Lars taking 14 damage just like that. Thanks, Ilani. There we go. Magic's getting a touch low, so I think I best be heading back to Hamlin. We get one more battle on the way, we can get level 3 for Moonbrook. Fantastic. This baboon can hit us for upwards of like 20 damage. Which is not very nice of them. As you can see, they're worth a lot of gold. 40 gold for one of them. Okay, we're out of the danger zone. Although this still could troll us if if they all fire bald moonbrook. But she goes first, she has the most agility, and just absolutely goes to town. All of a sudden they're just all neutralized. That simple. That simple. So we got 250 experience to go until we get that lovely Inferno spell. <laughs> oh, hello, friends. Just trying to see. I'm glad we didn't get this battle last time. because Moonbrook took 20 damage right off the hop. Go punch a Moonbrook. Yeah! <laughs> Go get him. Beautiful. Gotta love those one damage kills. I try and I seek them out as much as I can. Oh, you think parrying's going to help you? Well, I got a story for you. Right, that's going to be Maidenhall level 8. Very underwhelming 1-3-2 level. Not as bad as the 3 power and nothing else level. That's coming up soon. Ooh, nice. Boom. Nice. Beautiful. This will be a boatload of experience here. Very good mixture. 105. So next battle should should be close to enough. Please. Thank you. Lovely. Oh, we're four experience short of Infernos. Con Sarnet. Yeah, those uh, lizard flies are incredible. Absolutely incredible. 
or experience, but they don't give much gold, which is fair. I'll quit it. There we go. And we get a wing for our troubles. Again, that saves 80 gold. That's beautiful. So, typically in a series speedrun, we would go beeline it for the Cloak of Wind Tower. And oh my goodness, are you going to see the power of Infernals right here. Bye-bye, Centipods. Look at this. 73 gold, uh, experience 91 gold. Absolutely beautiful. Let's see if I can get one more fight. So yeah, typically we'd go right for the Tower of Wind, but I like to do some extra grinding to get either a Iron Spear or a Broadsword. The reason I like to get that is because it helps me repel enemies on the way to the tower. Which uh, is really interesting because Repel is based on Maidenhall's attack power. It has nothing to do with... It has a little bit to do with level because, you know, as you level up you get more attack power, but... I mean, the levels don't give you that much attack. You get a 30 attack power weapon, you're gonna repel a lot more stuff. There, we got 536 gold. And we're just gonna try and milk as much gold as quickly as we can, try and fight some baboons. Okay. There we go. Oh, a dodge, that's gross. Okay, okay, I see, I see how things are. Oh, ha <laughs> That's the only HP point that matters! <laughs> the cold as a cod count is absolutely zero. That parry was clutch. Yeah, we got pretty unlucky there, uh, because if Moonbrook goes at any point, then the baboons are just dead. But we got unlucky that Moonbrook went last, but because we parried and did things the way we did, that's what I'm talking about, like, the skill, the skill cap in this game. There are always these little minute decisions that can, like, increase your chance of success by so much. And that's the fascinating thing about this game. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna try and put the baboons to sleep. It, this is kind of an awkward group. Alright, there we go. We got a bit unlucky that we uh, didn't kill the lizard fly with the physical. We got a super low roll. We're all good. Boom! Go! Nice, Devlin! I'm actually in the middle of my first playthrough of Dragon Quest XI, and I just got the boat as well. <laughs> so I hear ya. I hear ya. Counter rate, please. Well, at least I know I have a wing if if things go south. Yeah, nice, we're at 850 gold. That's fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah, Silvando is a mood. That's for sure. Alright, 
one more battle, then we can head back to town. Beautiful. All right. Ha! All right, sure, I'll take this. Why not? I'll quit it. Yes, this, this run is the official Silvando appreciation run of the marathon. Right, level 9, our 3 power and nothing else level. Hilarious. Ah, another encounter! Wow! Wow! Back to back to back. Well, you can't give me an encounter on the next step because that's a town. Silly game. Oh, wow. Alright, we're gonna do the one damage kill, okay? Go get a Moonbrook. Yeah! <laughs> that brings the Moonbrook kill count, physical kill count, to two. See, there are benefits to knowing the max HP of all the monsters. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try and save up for a broadsword. That sounds like something that would be fun to do. Well, I mean, if you my number one rule for speedrunning is if you're gonna get bad RNG, it should at least be funny. And it allowed me to kill him with one damage from Moonbreak, so that's pretty funny, so. That's all well and good in my books. Beautiful. We, we want to see all the centipods in the world. They're so good for gold. And they carry pretty much no risk at all. Yeah! Yeah! I willed that into existence. Love it. Give me my 90 gold. Oh, 120, my bad. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. Oh, you love to see it. You absolutely love to see it. <laughs> Donation for the blindfolded road to run. Can't do this game blindfolded, but I can do Dragon Warrior 1 blindfolded. Maybe, maybe next DQ RTA. Hey. Oh, we'll see if we can get a Moonbrick kill. Nope. Oh my goodness, uh, Devlin. About that Cactaball encounter, I got the gold one on my very first encounter. This is what we like to refer to in the community as BS Mr. Holmes luck. Oh, that's a lot of army ants. So, we just killed six army ants, okay? Look at the trash experience in gold we're going to get from this. Six army ants is worth 32 experience and 11 gold. Just terrible. Oh, experience. Thank you. <laughs> okay, almost at 1500 gold. Didn't even see me. Yes. <laughs> see, this is my luck. I get in. I get insane luck if I'm playing a game casually, 
but as soon as I play a game seriously, I get the worst luck imaginable. So it's it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. about 150 more gold to be able to buy everything that I want to buy. Come on, Moonbrook. There you go. Uh-oh. Alright. Everything's fine. Nothing is wrong. Great. 131 gold, beautiful. One more fight, that's all I need. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This will give me about a hundred more gold as well. Fantastic. Actually, I lied. One more battle. One more. There's always one more. Always one more. <laughs> Fine, I'll fight some more trash army ants. My turn. <laughs> I keep forgetting, I only get 10 gold from that nonsense. There we go. Perfect. Now we have more than enough. Man Shiner, anytime you want to talk to me about Dragon Warrior 4, I am down. I am like so enamored with my routing that I do in that game. I would love to chat about it with you. Okay. Let us grab a broadsword. Beautiful. <laughs> I don't know, Shiner. Okay. And chuck this. Whip. Broadsword gives me 20 extra attack power. Sweet. I would be impressed too. That's why I don't want to make that commitment. <laughs> okay. Great. So what, basically what we're doing here is we are going to stock our inventory up with herbs because we want to use all our magic for offense and we don't want to use it for he uh, for healing so we use our healing with items okay your fall so any lottery tickets we could get here would be super helpful so again we are inevitably wanting to save up for 2,000 gold to get the Jailer's Key. Okay. There we go. Nice. But I mean... Again, you, you have this 1 in 6 chance of getting free gold from lottery tickets. And now that I think about it, we should play the lottery one. We should play it once, right?
100% playing the lottery. Oh, we're all full. Great! Let's lottery it up. Exactly! Wouldn't it be the greatest meme if we won the lottery? Alright. Dang it! We won another lottery ticket! <laughs> yeah, we want three moons, for sure. <coughs> ah! No lottery winner today. Okay. Let's use our lovely fairy waters. So the only enemies that I will be able to find are battles that have baboons in them and maybe battles that have zombies in them. And we skip a lot of the other battles. Which is really nice. None of those stinking army ants. Beautiful. Take this battle every day of the week. With it. Alright, let's use our second fairy water. It only lasts for a short time, but it can be trolly. So we should be in zombie land now, yeah. They're not really worth our time anymore. Only if they're in big groups and we can get value from an inferno spell. There you go. Easy. Kill that one. Interesting. Easy peasy. 145 experience. We are here to get the Cloak of Wind, which is going to help us float out of the top of one tower across a river to another side of the tower, which will allow us to uh, progress in the game. No effect. Thankfully, with our broadsword, we can just rip these smokes to pieces. Hmm. Oh, another group like this. Interesting. I'll take it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, of course you stand guard, you coward. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just getting a hair low on magic, so I want to make sure I don't run into any shenanigans.
No shenanigans here. Oh, good grief. No thanks. Huh. Ooh, interesting. sketchy. Oh, thank goodness they didn't all focus on Elani. Otherwise, we'd have been in a little bit of a world of hurt. Alright, herbs for everybody. Yeah, Dragon Quest 3 Remake is going to be soon TM. Good grief. Ow. This is not a long tower, we are almost where we need to be. Still don't want the game to troll me, you know? Nice, that helps. getting insane experience, but at the expense of most of our resources. And I thought I had plenty of resources, but we are slowly running out. <laughs> These battles, you just can't run from them. It's simple, if, if Moonbrick goes, we're fine. 16 damage from Infernos, that's terrible. Oh, good. They hit Alani, she was dead. Nice! <laughs> I could use an herb right about now. There is our Cloak of Wind. Let's get the heck out of here. So you'll notice when we hop out of this tower, we're going to end up a solid three tiles to the left. And that cloak ability is what's going to help us float across this, this waterway. We are doing fantastic for gold. I like it. Right. I actually have enough money to get some full plate armor, which is pretty spiffy. to give me a solid 25 defense. And I'm just going to fight a couple things here 
uh, just to get enough money to buy, to replace all the herbs we had to use. Shouldn't take too long. Basically, this journey we're going to take is super dangerous, and although the game can troll you no matter what level you're at, no matter what equipment you have, uh, this is reduces a lot of the room for error. Or sorry, it increases the room for error. What's the estimate for this run? It's 515. And the reason it's that much is because the end game can be super variable. I'm trying to remove the variability from the early game. Nice. We're actually already almost close to return experience, which Kanak learns at level 10. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's right, all the baboons. <laughs> yeah, tasses are hilarious, right? Tasses are hilarious like that. Oh, I'm going to call this the variety pack. <laughs> That's hilarious. Right. Boop. Oh, stop that. Unlimited baboon works. Welcome to the law firm of Baboon and Baboon and Baboon and Associates. That's fantastic. Ah, 627. Nice. These enemies we couldn't even do more than two damage to with physical attacks. We can one-shot them now. you love it. Let's stock back up. And then we can get ready for our trip to Leonport to get our ship. Let's grab a chainmail. I am. Only six more defense, but it helps. It all helps. Already sold the lottery ticket. Right, no, we didn't sell it. We used the lottery ticket. That's funny. Nice. Replacement lottery ticket.
That's right, all the medical herbs. Pretty much every last penny we have. Now, because this trick is so dangerous, we're just gonna save the game first. Anything can happen. is we can get all the way to the first monolith without even getting a single encounter. Did I only get one fairy water? Hmm, I should grab a second one. Sell that lottery ticket. There we go. If I do end up having to reset, I will have to remember that I did that. Hmm, interesting. I guess... Sometimes the repel logic works weird. Like, I don't think I should be able to get this encounter, but for whatever reason I am. Maybe it's because it's in the same zone as, as something I can get an encounter in. I don't know. No worries. Perfect. Hmm. All right. So this trek, we have to go across this fairly large desert, through some mountains, through five floors of the Tower of Shenanigans, and hopefully we make it out the other side. And we can make it to the import. Beautiful. That should be level 10. So if things go south, I may be able to use the return spell. Kind of nice. Right. <laughs> Tower shenanigans. Indeed. It'd be great if my characters could go. Asleep, 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 asleep. Beautiful. Now oh, that's kind of annoying. Not bad turn order. The princess went last both times. Oh well, no biggie. Plenty of worse dungeons than this. Oh, interesting. Don't do it. Ah! They did it. Those jerks. They blocked my spell. What? Shenanigans. Yeah, so yeah, Princess is supposed to be fast, but in this game, agility is like super random. 
Basically, they add a random number between 0 and 255 to your agility to determine turn order. So I could still very easily get outsped by a blue slime. It's terrible. You have no herbs, that's fine. Alright. Five floors of bananas. This one doesn't count. Floor one. Mm, okay, I can fight this. Oh man. Again, like this Megapede has one HP left. <laughs> Silly Megapede. Hey, it's a metal slime. I wonder if I can even do any damage to it. Again, that would have only given me 130 experience really funny. Well, if you don't like flashing things, I advise you to look away. I call that the flashy flashy battle. Actually, I'm getting a very high encounter rate in here. It's making things kind of problematic. Nice KO. Sweet. What do we get from you? A Dragon's Bane? That's amazing! Wow! I have never gotten that drop before. That gives me protection from Medusa Balls casting Sleep. Jeez, another encounter. Oh, and there's a Medusa Ball. Go figure. Now quit it. Quit it. Oh, and I'm gonna get what, a fairy water or is it? Oh, antidote. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a crazy tower. Oh, man. Hey, Centroid, thanks for the good luck. We will pick up the Dew's Yarn in a little bit. Oh, interesting. Again, these Magidrakis are harmless, but they add to the multiplier. Magidraki is the Minister of Defense, because that seems to be all they like to cast. Fantastic. And we're there. Cool. 
So, we made it to this town, which unfortunately doesn't even have a save point. And we have this ship that we'd love to get. Except there are some gremlins wreaking havoc in the town that we have to defeat. And they could troll us very hard. But I hope that doesn't happen. Oh, not you. I can actually afford, afford a second Dragon's Bane. It's pretty nice. Love to see it. Alright. Yes, Princess and Prince's name is based on the hero's name. 100% true. Ah, there's the sleep cast! Mine was slightly more effective. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Like a charm. Time to wake up for your doom! for the ship. Right, need to get the Doos Yarn. So this is a, an ingredient to make one of the, well, the most, the best armor in the game. And the story is that it's hanging around on the third floor of this tower. And it, some people, including myself, used to think you had to search and find what tile it was in. But actually, it's just a search anywhere on that floor, and you have a one in four chance of finding it. So if I didn't find it the first time, I just searched that same square all over again. Do it. Rude. Rude. Again, turn order is very annoying. Right. Now that we've got the ship, our goal is to get all the keys as quickly as possible. Okay. Yeah, our Dragon's Bane protects us against Sleep Cast, but not Sleep Breath, which is kind of annoying. I'm starting to think it's going to be worth my while to pick up some fairy water. Should be able to repel a fair amount of things in the water. So let's do that. I think the time it takes me to detour into the town is... Worth the time I'll save from less encounters. One, two, I said two, <laughs> and we'll get three just for good measure. Great. Oh, hi. Thanks again for the boat. Oh, right. 
right, I don't have room in my inventory because that stupid antidote herb threw up. So first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna try and get the golden key. Man, sleep breath is a real thing, huh? There we go. Oh man. One for four on, on that. Jeez, one for five! What is going on? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm just gonna do this. Are you kidding me? That was horrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's this? Thou hast no gold? Revival ain't cheap. Alright, we can sell that Cloak of Wind. Man, that was bonkers. I have to figure out how the heck I'm going to do this. Yeah, they only give me one HP. I should only have to pay for one gold. I'm smart, I will safety save because the sea could troll us again. take a really awkward path around here. I guess I could do this. Yeah, let's get the silver key first, why don't we? Yeah, yeah, I can make this work. I can make this work. It's very rare that something like that happens, so I need to kind of think on the fly based on what my levels are, what my gold's at, all these things go into play. So I'm going to get the silver key, which I would usually get second. Then I'm going to walk back to Kana. I'm going to save. Then I'm going to try and sail to the gold key and do things kind of backwards. At the end of the day, it should still be fine. I'm just trying to do it in a way that minimizes danger. Because what's optimal and what's safest are two different things here. I'm going to try and stick to land as much as I can. So here we've got the silver key. Which we're literally only going to use to open one door in the entire game. That's a, a door in Maidenhall Castle. It's not even essential to the plot. Like you could probably just talk to people behind silver key doors to get information, but it's nothing actually critical. Hmm. 
So it's actually crazy. I, I could have potentially gotten this key over an hour ago. You can get it when you only have Maidenhall and Kanak. And you just end up death warping out of the cave so you don't have to walk out, but... Thankfully, I got a really low encounter rate in here. Ant! I don't like ants. Yeah, we're gonna leave the ship where it is. We're gonna walk to Kanak with our fairy water, so we're guaranteed to get no encounters. We will get some more fairy waters. We'll save the game here, then we'll cast Return, which will pop the ship out on the north coast, which will make our trek to the next place a lot quicker. While also getting a safety save in, so multiple benefits. Oh, I don't even have enough money for that. Okay. Whatever. No biggie. Still need to save the game to set this as our return point. In Dragon Warrior 2, return only takes you to the last place you saved. You can't choose. why it's nice we have level 10. Okay. Hmm. Wow. Hit that Medusa Ball for 40. a KO if I've ever seen one. We're gonna have to take some really weird pathings here. Right. I guess we're stopping at the World Tree right now. see something in the water, this is what we want it to be. The centipods of the sea. Yoink! I'll take that world tree. Hey! What did I just say? doing everything so out of order. We're gonna grab the first crest. No, I can actually fight this. thing about this is we're way ahead of our typical experience rate. I'm actually getting close to some really nice spells. So I'm also secretly trying to work towards that. We're in the bad zone. <laughs> very short, very dangerous zone. dog is going to show us the way to the golden key. Well, there is key number two. And we're going to pop through here.
We're going to grab the token of Erdrick. And then since Kanek is my return point, we're just going to fly our way right back there. This is perfect. This actually worked really well. We can grab the shield of Erdrick. Where's that leather shield? Oh, it's way up top. Oh, I guess I'm throwing it away. Doesn't matter. That's hilarious. And now we can go up to get the Jailer's Key. Great! Exactly as I planned it. See, I couldn't come here until I have the golden key, because there's this door here. Don't accidentally throw that away. And then let's hear a song. Oh, get back here. Thank you. So, we hardly have any gold. But what we do have is all this gear that we can sell. And what's fascinating about this game is, until you look at the equipment menu, or level up, that equipment is still going to have effect. So that's that's really neat. So I, I got the stuff to make myself stronger, now I can sell it, but still keep the strength. So we got the silver key, the golden key, the jailer's key, and the last key is the Watergate key. Perfect. Now we have to do a little dipsy doodle back to that fire shrine to get the helmet of Erdrick. So we had, we had, we had to be a little redundant here, but that's because I had that weird C issue. Fast finger is. Wait, what? <laughs> eh. right, you don't call for friends now, Goopy. That's right. You'll notice I'm still doing a billion damage to these sea slugs. Like I mentioned, I still have the effect of the broadsword on. Oh, don't you dare. Get out of here. Don't you dare. If I can get through this little circuit, I will be a lot happier. <laughs> I will be much happier. Alright. Take this quick little portal here. You missed the song for now.
There will be more songs. Oh, shoot, because I went in the equipment menu, now I don't have the broadsword. Whatever. Not relevant anymore. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I went too far south. Interesting. I guess it's only to five. <laughs> Alright. I feel a lot better now. So we're going through this little portal. Back to Mine Hall. We're going to save and set this as our return point. And then... We are going to walk through a bunch of barrier tiles to get the other ingredient for the best armor in the game. And because we don't have to want we don't want to have to walk back through them, we're gonna cash return back here. So that is the current plan. damage each character for every step we take here. But we have enough magic to make it. So this is always the fun math part. Everybody is safe. So we grab our magic loom and we head back home. Perfect. So as I mentioned at the very, very beginning of the run, the start of this game is basically just a race to get all the keys as quickly as possible. And the reason is, these three keys are going to allow us to fight a evil clown that's in jail here. And that evil clown is going to drop a Staff of Thunder, which sells for 19,500 gold. And we can actually utilize a trick with the way the game works to basically get as many of those as we want. So here we go. This is the only door we need the silver key for. Yeah, the damage tiles do wipe. Indeed. Blip. Alright, so this will be just a tiny bit trickier because I'm essentially just punching with my fists here. Oh well. Alright. Would thou allow me to escape and tell Hargon many tidings? More than one. Oh, but thou art such a fool. Ha <laughs> ha! Who's the fool now? Who's the fool now, evil clown? He didn't even see me. What a dummy. Clown, you've been in jail too long. So here we go, we get our first drop of the Staff of Thunder. So that evil clown is very special. He's the only evil clown who will drop that, and he'll drop it 100% of the time. But the thing is, if you already have a Staff of Thunder, he will not give you another one. So what we're going to do is sell the Staff of Thunder and 
If we were to go back into that jail again, well, he would be gone. So how are we going to get fight that evil clown again? We do this by saving and resetting the game, and the evil clown pops up again. And the game's like, hey, I'm a special evil clown. I'm going to give you a Staff of Thunder. Oh, you don't have one already? Let me give you one. And so we do this little loop over and over and over to get as much gold as we want. So there we go, we sell the staff, we save, we reset, and we're going to fight another one. Hey! Pretty much, Nika, pretty much. There's some sort of illicit transactions going on here. The merchant and the evil clown are secretly in cahoots. So we're gonna fight this evil clown over the course of a run a total of six times. We're gonna only do it four times at first because any more and we would be over the gold cap for the game. So we're going to do it four times to max out our gold. Then we're going to go spend it and then come back and fight a couple more. Who cares if I don't have a broadsword? Where'd you go? There you are. So yeah, in the span of four minutes, we've gained 39,000 gold pieces. Just wild. Seti Poo again. So in total, uh, we're our aim is to get fifty nine thousand gold. That is to get the light sword, which is the most powerful weapon we can buy. For Maidenhall, 16,000. And we're getting two shields of strength, which are 21,500 each, which allow us to cast Heal More as an item, which is just invaluable in this run. Just insanely good. So, this clown is typically super dangerous because he can cast Firebane, but thankfully Sleep has a pretty high chance of working, has a 5 out of 7 chance of working. And so far we've been able to outspeed the clown and put it to sleep every time. There we go. That is staff number three. And that's going to give us this uh, 59,000 gold. But we're going to fight one more just so that we have a Staff of Thunder that we can temporarily use. And the Staff of Thunder costs so much because it is a free cast of Infernos. So we can give it to Canuck so we have two Infernos casters in the party. Does he have Explode It? So in this one, Moonbrook's the only one who learns Explode It. And we actually never get it in the run. We don't level up that high.
Alright, three down, one to go. Oh, the Evil Clown? So, the Evil Clown only has exploded in the remakes? Like, this, this clown is replaced by a much stronger enemy. The equivalent in this game is called a Mace Master, and you can only see them in the final castle of the game. So, no, he just has Fire Beam in this version. No problem! Glad we're on the same page. Sleep worked, he woke up, but that doesn't matter too much. Ow, quit it. There we go, that's four. Four clowns! Ah, 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 ah. So let's toss this over here. Save and reset one more time, not because we're going to fight an evil clown now, but because we'll fight it in a little bit after our shopping. And we can just set it up now and combine it with a safety save. Hey, 69 experience to the next level. Good job, Kamek. Sorry about that. to do our shopping trip, we are going to quickly rob this shopkeeper in... Oh my goodness, can't remember the name. Osterfair Castle. And we're going to get some sick armor. Some armor of Gaia. Check this out. 56 to 91 defense. Never even saw us. Jingle always reminds me of Sports Center. Da da da, Sports Center. Alright, Staff of Thunder is going to come in clutch here. Jeez, I just cannot seem to hit with Infernals today. <laughs> Good grief. Just missing, missing, missing. Yes, robbing shops is a staple. That is true, Anat Anatolu. Is it stealing if the item just reappears? The economy in these games are just messed up. No wonder they have problems. Yeah. Almost there. 
and then we will be big, strong fellers. But that was a very nice low encounter walk. And before we play the song, which is super important, we need to do something more important and talk to the dogs. I have not done enough of that this run. Dogs are super important. All right, here we go. We are grabbing a light sword. Oh. Um, okay, we'll just throw the water gate key over here. There we go. One. Two. And three. And Moonbrook can't equip this, but just that three heal more is worth the 20,000 gold alone. Beautiful. And then we're going to sell the Staff of Thunder so we can get another one. And we're going to pick up... Typically I'd pick up three Dragon's Banes, but... I got the drop, and I had enough money to buy one earlier, so I only need one. Great. And song's over. Song is over. We're right back to fighting two more evil clowns. This time with the light sword, this is going to go a lot quicker. Ah, <laughs> didn't see me again. You really are a fool. Bye-bye. Sell, save, and reset one more time, and we will be just perfect. That 38,000 gold is going to go towards a set of magic armor and a 25,000 gold falcon sword, which is a weapon that allows you to attack twice, but it doesn't give you much attack power, so you might think, why the heck would we want that? Well, just you wait, we're going to use that for a very, very crucially important trick later on. That probably cuts like an hour and a half out of the run. I'm not sure if anybody who, uh, Played this game as a kid remembers the level they beat the game at. But in this speedrun, we typically beat the game around level 21 or 22. Which is just like mind bogglingly low. You, Mr. Clown? I have not gotten hit by Firebane once. That's wild. Oh, maybe this time. Cursed? Cursed? Nope, not cursed. Yeah, that's why I'm saying you, you can't go at the level we do without using this Falcon Sword trick. 
which is why it's so very important later on. You're gonna die, clown! The price is wrong, evil clown. The price is wrong. Alright. But we have a pretty dangerous trip. Actually, one slightly dangerous trip and one very dangerous trip to get to spend this gold. Uh, we have to make a slightly dangerous trip to get to a checkpoint along the way where we can save. Typically, in like a serious run, I wouldn't save because I rarely die, but it's the marathon. So if I didn't save, it means I would 100% die. Y'all know how that works. A single mana war. Not even worth the time of day. But I'm 574 experience points from learning repel, so I would love to get that. Nice job, Lars. What a perfect battle. Yeah, Dragon Warrior 3 has a bank back in uh, Oliahan. That is correct. Nothing like that here, though. So the sea travel isn't the dangerous part of this trek. It's like the 25 tiles of land we have to walk on very quickly. With like dragonflies and all sorts of shenanigans. Basilisks, evil trees. Gold orcs. Regular orcs. Or borks as I like to call them. Don't you do it. <laughs> Silly sleep breath. Alright. Hey, get out of here. Get out of here. Only 167 to learning repel. Go, 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 go! Yes! <laughs> Guess it wasn't even 20 tiles, it's more like 15. Alright, I'd like to talk to you, please. Thank you. I guess if I'm learning Repel, I don't really need to do this, but it's still helpful. Save the magic. Yeah. Counter rate is clearly not high enough. Uh, I was watching my friend play Arkista's Ring yesterday, and in that game, like, the game gets X percent harder every time you beat it. It's so, like, every time you beat this, they should, like, increase the encounter rate by 10%, increase the monster's strength by 10%. Clearly they should do that in this game. It needs more of a challenge. Kappa. Hey, Lavkian. Thank you for the good luck. I want to get the fairy water rather than fight to get that extra 200 experience is 
because if I die on this walk, which is a very real possibility, then I have to reset and all the battles would be a waste anyway, so might as well just get the repel to speed the process up and or get the fairy waters to speed the process up, then we'll learn repel eventually. In very short order. Right. We have like 10 steps before we actually get into an another non-encounter zone. Just need to get halfway into these mountains. Not quite. <laughs> Ah! Borks! No! Bad Borks! Alright, I see how it is. I see how it is. into the encounter zone. Yeah. Want to say 15 more steps to go? Make it 15 steps. We got three! <laughs> oh, poop. That is the first COD. Like I said, that's why I didn't want to take fights on the way. Yeah, four run fails in five tries. Bad luck. Oh, good grief. Oh, that's just like an instant, <laughs> instant party wipe there. Getting preemptive by five dragonflies with no fire protection. I'm not even joking, that would have just killed everybody. Definitely you needed to save before doing this walk, because it is very sketchy. That's the first real, like, run-failing shenanigans I've run into thus far, which is pretty good, honestly. That's why I route things to fight most things, to remove that variability from the early game. steal all my magic. One of the worst abilities in this game. There's 21 magic just ripped off right there. Oh my goodness. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, this is Dragon Warrior 2 for you. I 
can you do? steps away again. And we just cannot make it, it seems like. steps away. Nice dodge, that helps a lot. Jeez. Oh boy. I think I'm gonna survive just by the skin of my teeth here, yeah. in a really bad patch of RNG. Brutal. I'm dead. Just cannot make it. frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. Just gotta remember that. Hmm. That's why we give these games the estimates we do. It starts to get in your head at some point. That, oh, I'm just following the same RNG path over and over. Even though I know I'm not. It still gets in your head, though. didn't see me. Finally some good luck. <laughs> I just can't make it to this town. gonna fight this because I I can win it so the thing is like the way I'm routing things I'm not fighting Atlas to like level 23 so yeah the estimate is super high for this Really what will decide a lot of things is how the road to Roan goes.
the heck out of here, Silver Key. I don't want you anymore. Takes a very special type of person to speedrun these games. Get that magic armor on. Yeet the chainmail into the stratosphere. So that was thing one we're doing in this town. Thing number two is the guy who builds the water flying clothes, the best armor in the game, is in this town. He says it's going to take time, which basically means we need to save and reset the game. Which we will do all in good time. And thing number three we're going to do is we're going to use the Watergate key. Uh, and it's going to open the floodgates, not only allow a quicker path to this town, but it'll also open up a path to the Moon Tower, which is going to be a place we are required to go. Hi, Sparko. Hi, Ellie. Hi, everyone. So, we've done those three things. Let's save and reset the game to finish the, comp the uh, production of the first set of water flying clothes. And I say first set because we're going to take advantage of this tiny little window we have where we're going to get the ingredients to make the water flying clothes again. Normally, the game wouldn't allow you to pick up a second set. It checks, like, hey, do you have the water flying clothes already? Or do you have the items already? And if one of those is true, it won't give it to you. Well, we have neither of those conditions met in this small window here. So we can actually pick up the second set of ingredients and then just give them to him right after we get the first pair, or first set of clothes. So, off we go. Alright, we can fight this. Why not? There's no risk here. Beautiful. Now quit it. Alright, I gotta remember I have the shield of strength that I can use here. Oh well. Sports Center. Yeah, now that we've got these shenanigans done, we get to chill for a while, for like 40 minutes till we encounter the next set of shenanigans. The next set of shenanigans being the Sea Cave. Where we get the Eye of Malroth to enter the final-ish dungeon. Dungeon to the final area. Ooh, flashy flashy. Cozy dinner and baking stream. I hope it has lots of vegetables. Oh, hi, Metal Slime. What? 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 They put me asleep through the Dragon's Bane. Two of my characters. That's ridiculous. I call shenanigans. Fine then, I won't take your 135 experience. Alright. Hmm, could have more vegetables. So we picked up one set of ingredients, 
And we're gonna grab the second set in here. Gonna go over our friends the barrier tiles one more time. Oh, nice heal more for like 30. <laughs> I call shenanigans on that. So did you blind bake the crust spark over? This is officially a baking stream now, just, just so y'all know. So in binary, we have 33 gold. No, 17. I can do binary. Mmm, hand pies. Yes, DH Stone. Yes. He's dead, Jim. Now quit it. Should be level 13 for my mall, which means we're gonna get level 12 for Lars in a jiffy, which will give us the outside spell. Which would be just super. the short way but we're the game's back to its old encounter rate shenanigans and run rate shenanigans Thanks for letting me know Repel's not working. Appreciate it, game. Appreciate it. Alright, so there is 
the first set of water flying clothes. All right, I need to give him the second set. There we go. Perfect. That'd have been silly if I forgot that. So just like the first set, to finish its completion, we need to save and reset. Which is not incredibly obvious when you listen to what the guy says. He says it'll just be done in a while. You think, oh, I'll just stay at the inn like a few times. Just past time. You never get it. Also, if the princess's inventory is full, he also won't give it to you. So it's very silly. You equipped it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Gives me like 40 defense, fire protection, magic protection. It's an all around great set of armor. In fact, if I could get three, I would. Screw the armor of Erdrick. It's better than that. So much so that we actually switch a water flying clothes to the hero for the Malroth fight. Yeah, yeah, repel. Not working, I get it. All right, how many encounters on this seven-step walk are we going to get this time? Oh, apparently none. <laughs> Go team! The tides are a-changing. Right? Thank you very much. This can go to you. And I actually have started getting rid of the armor of Gaia here. I actually grabbed this magic armor. Because the magic protection for me is better than the extra defense. And extra defense from the armor of Gaia. Sweet. Fantastic. Alright, let's go. Now we... Since we did the water gate key thing, we can access this tower by boat. Oof. Oof. All right. Nothing's wrong. It's a short tower, but it's very, very, very dangerous. I'm just gonna play a little game of up and right simulator. Up, right, up, right, up, right. Nice. And this is actually one of the reasons I get, I wear the magic armor because of these enemies with Firebane, they can cause real shenanigans. Now let's just shield of strength here. Save some magic. Jeez. Staff, please. Help me out. Help me out. Hmm. 
All right. This is what we came to get, the Moon Fragment. It's going to help us raise the sea cave from the sea. Go figure. <laughs> that is the worst encounter in here by far. Love it. Love it. Power of Shenanigans is, is finished. Oh, are we going to get a lottery ticket? I guess not. A surprising amount of enemies drop lottery tickets in this. In particular, ants and skeletons really love to drop lottery tickets. Say any day now, Lars. Good grief. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. I was expecting that fight to go a much bit quicker than it did. Anywho! Uh, so, in the past hour or so, we basically got... Bought all the items we're going to need for the rest of the run. We've got two of the best sets of armor in the game. We've got the best weapon we can buy. And now that we've done all this preparation, our goal is to start collecting the five crests that will allow us to pierce the veil of the final castle. And we will get the... We've already got one. Ah! No! Damn it, phone. was the theme song for the NES game Colorful Dragon, in case you were wondering. I don't know why I made that my alarm clock sound, it just it, it jolts you awake. <laughs> Alright, so we got one crest, we're gonna get another here in the lighthouse, then we're gonna get another one back in Hamlin. Then we're going to head out to Osterfair and get one there really quick. Then we'll get the Eye of Malaroth, then we'll get the fifth one in Roan. The Road to Roan, at least. All within about half an hour. This tower is the longest one in the game. It can go a lot of different ways. It all depends on your encounter rate. This is one of those encounters where it's not really worth as much as you want, but it's too dangerous to run away from. Just how I wanted. Awesome. So a lot of going through this tower is based on MP management. So if you want to go fast, you just run from everything. But as you see, the run rate in this game can cause all sorts of problems. Uh, but if you fight too much, you run out of resources. So I try and find this like middle ground and try and really conserve my MP as much as I can in these fights.
So if it's not good value and it's not dangerous, I'll just run away from it. If it's dangerous but I can fight it, I'll, I'll take care of that. For example, this. Like basically, if I can quickly get through through the enemies, then it's it's worth fighting, in my opinion. And then I will try and use the Shield of Strength to heal, but didn't get that in, so I have to spend some magic. Yeah, like a, definitely like a typewriter. A, B, A, B, A, C, D, F. <laughs> so again, this battle here could be dangerous, but we can literally win the battle in one turn, so... At the expense of four magic. For 230 experience, it's worth it. Again, my general philosophy when I run games is I like to do as much grinding as you go as I can. And obviously that's not the optimal way of doing things, but you'd be surprised how not bad it is in a lot of games. And in fact, in this game, it's, it's definitely like faster just because of how hard it is to run from battles. You can get in all sorts of shenanigans otherwise. So this is not a worthwhile fight to take, but they're not, it's not dangerous, but it gives me a chance to heal up the princess, so I'm going to take that. And now that I've done that, I don't even care about fighting it. So it's a, a nice little strategy you can do from time to time. Quit it. Oh, didn't kill that one. Interesting. Well, maybe I can try and heal. That's that's a good trade. Took five damage, but healed seventeen. Ooh, we got the clothes. Epic drop. Nice. This is actually a little dangerous for the hero. So, we're really hoping... Yeah, th if all of the dragonflies went first, that could have caused some problems. So it's good to keep the hero above, like, 55 damage just because of that fight. had to roll the dice there. Nice. Boom. Come on, Moonbrook! Yeah! No fire breath for you! Beautiful. Beautiful. I love getting those bundles of experience. So sweet. <laughs> sure, we can fight this again just to heal Moonbrook. Yeah. It really is, well, fun for the most part. It's fun until you start running out of resources. <laughs> hey now. Enough with that surround. Ooh, can we get a one damage kill here? Let's go. One damage, one damage, one damage. Come on. 
No, the crit! The crit! <laughs> Incredible. Ooh, hello. Yeah, here's the scorching flames. That was even better than a one damage kill. That was a swag kill through and through. Alright, lovely. Was that 414 experience, I'm guessing? Yeah, I remembered. Fisher Price, I can remember, TM. So, oh look, it's a bad guy. It's a gremlin. Hi, bad guy gremlin. Right. Just kidding, it's a friend. This clearly is not a trap. I'll follow you to the crest. I just want to be safe in case I get to that dragonfly battle. These are such weird enemies. Like, there are a few enemies in, like, any Dragon Quest game where they're purely support enemies. And they're worth reasonable experience. And they can cause you problems when they're with other monsters, but when they're by themselves, it's just, like, it's free. It may take a while to kill them, but it's free. Yeah, MP is getting a little bit low here. All right, it's still manageable though. Money that I no longer need. Just extra text. Right, that was a good walk. Glad I parried there. What? What are those damage rolls, game? Get out of here. Get out of town. Alright. Open the treasure chest. Sure. I'm just gonna heal, you know, just in case. Before I go to the next town, you know, I just want to be safe when I'm outside. Oh no, a trap! It's a trap! Sleep, 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 sleep. That's helpful. First one! Yay! What? How you know dead? <laughs> All right. There we go. And hiding underneath that fake chest was the Star's Crest. 
Sucker led us right to it. What a strange group of enemies. Yeah, there's crust two. And in about two minutes, we're going to get crust number three. Back in Hamlin, the, the, the place we went to 20 minutes into the game. But we didn't have the Jailer's Key when we came here, so we couldn't actually access this. Not that we could beat the mini-boss here anyway. But now we're all tanked up. trust random men wandering in towers anymore. Who can you trust? Who, I say? Okay, magic armor also helps in this battle, since these Oswarks use fire beam. love if you called friends. That'd be great. More experience for me. Hey! <laughs> I call shenanigans. What? There we go. Now, we don't get the crest automatically. You have to remember to search this top right square. Search the square. There we go. Ooh, interesting. This could cause problems. But it's a super juicy battle. Nice job, Lars. Way to go. Beautiful. Now quit it. So yeah, in the span of two minutes, we got two crests. And in about two more minutes, we'll get another crest. One basilisk and two basilisks appear. The left one is not friends with the other two. They've made that abundantly clear. Oh, wow. That's impressive. That's very impressive. They all ganged up for exact lethal. Well, we're going to be stone's throw from the world tree, so might as well use that now. <laughs> One step encounter. Yeah, the, the basilisk has left. What a game. I was going to go to Osterfair, but now I have to go to the World Tree. Silly game. That is merely a minor detour. Nice. 
That was a solid parry. <laughs> My land encounter rate is just bonkers. There we go. Sometimes, very infrequently, Kanuk is actually useful. So in some contexts, he needs to be alive. Hate metal slimes? Aw. <laughs> One of these days. Unsurprisingly, Maidenhall goes absolutely last. So they've got a crest just hanging out in this castle, and the, the only way to get it is to fight this seemingly a dog, who's actually a tiger. Very trivial battle with our current level and equipment. You entertain me, thou wilt receive a prize. Well, if I... Excuse me? <laughs> to say if I two-shot the saber line... No. Unsurprisingly, 69 damage was not enough. There we go. So there is crest number four. And the last one is in the cave to Rhone, but to get into Rhone, we unfortunately need to do the sea cave. Sea cave is not, not fun. Short, but not fun. We'll have to see what happens. Well, in that case, Paradox, we just intimidate the king into giving us the Mooncrest. You want to meet the same fate as that dog? Um, moon Fragment. Yay! Evil Eye. How are you? Bye-bye. Those enemies are the worst. They can steal your magic in bulk. Rob magic is like one of the most broken enemy abilities in this game. And Rob magic is also based on how much you have. It's a percentage. So it just gets worse as you level up. These trees also possess that ability. Thankfully, they do other things. What determines the ally names in this game? Just the hero's name. Wait, what am I doing here? Metal Battle, run! I just need to go up, right? Yeah, okay. I lost my track in the cave. This is the worst floor right here. It's full of two particular enemies. The saber tiger that we just had in that boss battle. And mummies. Now don't get me wrong, 
Saber Tiger by itself is easy. When they're in a group of three or four, it's not easy, and they focus fire. So basically, one run fail from a group of three means someone's dead. Oh, thank god. Oh man, that's so lucky. No, game! Game, please. Any floor but this one. So far, so far, knocking on every piece of wood in my house, we are unscathed. And all we have to do is beat these two evil clowns and then grab a chest in the next room. Right. Okay. Let's sleep not work on either of them, because that's really annoying. down. There we go. Man, that clown does not want to stay asleep. There's that. Now we just need to make it to the chest, which is easier said than done. What do we got? Okay. Uh, we can take care of this. This is actually going to be worth a ton of experience. Alright. Um, can I take 25 damage? I might take 25 damage. So let's just play it safe. Great! Got him! 340 experience, yes please! And there is the Eye of Malrog. The rare case where Kanak is useful, having outside, and return. Now we can get into the road to Rome. Major roadblock down. But it's the smallest of the three roadblocks in the game. Time to actually do the road to Rome. Super fun, happy times afoot. Now we uh, put the marathon routing to the test. Oh, that is a jailer's key lock, my friend. So the first goal here is to get the Life Crest, and the second goal is to get Erdrich's Armor and the Thunder Sword. Once we accomplish those two tasks, then we can look at trying to make it through the cave. I have Nalroth, you probably have it. Now, first of all, I can chuck this. 
Second of all, I can chuck that. Third of all, this can go to you. Very limited inventory in this game. So, just getting ahead of things. Okay, need a heal for you. And probably use your magic here. Great. Welcome to the road to Rowan, everybody. Once we hit this down staircase, we're going to drop into something I call the Bork Pit. Has the highest encounter rate in the game. We fluked out and didn't get any, which is fantastic. <laughs> Just encounters, they're all out here. Ow. 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 Alright. Um, can I go, please? Jeez. Brutal. I'm in trouble here. Okay. Nice! Saved! Yeah, they're, they're both pretty awful. The Necrogon is super gross. Alright, I'm actually going to take things really safe, and I'm just going to checkpoint after getting the Life Crest. Fill up my resources, and then just go and go for the sword and armor. And also save that big chunk of experience I just got. Level 15 is pretty nice for a speed run for this point. It's terrifying in a casual run. Oh yeah, the pits. Right. Yeah, if you know where you're going in both, they're both equally bad. But if you're in a casual playthrough, your own is probably worse. Right. One Hibabango playing their Hibabongo. Quit it. Ow, quit it. Okay. I'm impressed that no one died there. Two steps. Would be to get an encounter with eight metal slimes in it. Mm, I'm gonna fight this. Again, this would be like, I wouldn't do this in a super fast run, but I'm just trying to get some experience. So even if shenanigans happen, I can be protected. Yeah, let's 
fine. It's fine. Boom. Right, that's that's absolutely perfect. Oh, you're not dead, really. Yeah, that's like 400 experience, I want to say. 450. Fantastic. battle fight. Good job, Lars. Hmm. Eh. Oh, you used Healmore. Well, I'll use Healmore too, then. Yeah, goofball. Nice. Everyone's at full health. That's what you like to see. So again, fighting these battles is part of the marathon strategy. Because even if things don't work out well, I still got 700 experience thus far. Nice. What is, let's take our Erdrix armor. See if we can make our way to the Thunder Sword. Or we could just run into the worst encounter in here. How about that? How about that? Alright. Yeah, I could be five levels higher and that would still kill me. That would still be a full party wipe every time. Nah, dying to that fight is just like casting outside but with extra steps. That's two out of the three things I needed to get from that cave. So, still progress. Yeah, so those are the first dragons in the game, and I can assure you we do not want to see them. We do not want to see them at all. And that's kind of one of the annoying things about this game. I could spend an hour and a half grinding, get five levels, and still just get smacked by that encounter. And it's, it wouldn't be fightable either. <laughs> just, you can't do anything. Alright, so... With Erdrick's armor, we get barrier tile protection, which means I don't have to heal as much. Yeah, the difficulty in the uh, the lighthouse and the sea cave and Roan is just brutal. That was a nice quick death. So we're currently sitting at four run fails in a row. Yeah, we got nothing left to do out here. We just gotta forge our way through to Roan. 
where there's just a vast improvement in grinding ability once you get there. Yeah, that's a big part of it, Angsar. They didn't have enough time to really fully balance the game. Five run fails in a row. Six run fails in a row. One in the 729. So these are the kind of shenanigans you have to deal with in this game. There's just nothing I can do about that. <laughs> yes, or I call it Thursday. my first encounter of the cave right here. What? How do you not die? That's crazy. Oh, that's so annoying. Nice! Get out of here, gargoyle! You're not gonna survive that. An encounter. Oh, they didn't see me. No, there's no world where I'm fighting this battle. <laughs> I'm actually really close to beating it, but nope. All right, fantastic. Fell right on top of him. Burnt my butt. All right, Thunder Sword. And I pretty much use no magic, so I'm just gonna start an attempt at getting to roam. Ha! <laughs> Firebane. <laughs> Crit it! Crit it! Come on. Oh, four damage. Hog. Eight. Credit. Credit. 
11! <laughs> they have like 30 plus HP, just in case you aren't aware. Oh man! <laughs> 15! Ah! <laughs> That was fantastic. It was just a very elaborate free heal. Who's dying? Oh, no one's dying. Nice. Hmm. Oh, nice little variety pack here. Get him. Nice. using heal more. experience. Hmm. All right. Nice. Hey, don't you dare hit Lars. I'm actually going to parry. Just use this as a chance to try and heal. Alright. Keep it going. Now we're into the, the fun encounter floors. Oh, with our flashy, flashy battle. Oh, great. You had to fire me, me didn't you? All right, we're going to try and crit it and just use it as an opportunity. No, no, we're not going to do that. Ah, yeah, we are. One turn. There. Now I can get free heals. Flashy, flashy. So close to something I could fight. So I'd say we're probably about 60% of the way through right now. Resources are low, though. Oh, that's annoying. Right. Get him. Hmm. 
All right, that's kind of annoying. I was hoping to get some heals in before that fight ended. Oh, perfect! Magic Vampire are absolutely fantastic. They're an another one of these support enemies where they're annoying if they're with other dudes, because they lower your defense and they breathe fire. But on their own, they are not a problem. Sweet! I love it. Free bonus. cost me any magic. Beautiful. Oh, magic hat? <laughs> Easy every time. One step encounter. somewhere. Hmm. This is going to be like the dumbest decision I ever do, but this is what I'm doing. Just land one, please. Land once. Land once. That's 771 experience. <laughs> More flashy flashy. Oh, what is going on, game? Enough with the fire bands, jeez. 69. Enough with the fire beams. Jeez. Get out of here, Metal Babbles. Get out of here. No. No, 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 no. Oh, my goodness, that's terrible. I have to do this now. my chain here. I can almost, just almost taste the fresh air. Now the sprint begins.
Let's go! Let's go! We are at Rhone. Deep breaths. We are at Rhone with our Leaf of the World tree still... still intact. So we're one very quick fight away from level 16. Then we can play things by ear from there. We're gonna die a lot in this grind, but the lovely thing is that we just get a free revive and we come right back here. So this fight, for example, is worth like 1100 experience. It's just, this place is just great. Getting here is such a huge relief. Bam! 1178 experience. And our experience is just gonna shoot up like crazy. Um, not so much, Shiner. You can, potentially, but the main benefit, I think, in the remakes is your ability to fight green dragons and to be able to potentially kill metal babbles for 10,000 experience, right? Which we do not have in this, that ability in this version. Plus we want to fight giants to get a sort of destruction drop, so it's kind of counterproductive to that goal. you to use heal all. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Thankfully our Cyclops is very very sleepy, which means we're all good here. Uh, it is the remakes where Lars gets sick in the town of Baran. When you stay at the end, you have to cure him with the leaf. Oh, these are just brilliant battles here. Nice dodge, hero. Alright, just go all out offense. We've gotten over 3,000 experience since we started here, which was more than we got in the last half hour to 40 minutes of the game. That's how good this place is. Kill the right one. Yeah! Beautiful. Oh, sleepy bye. There's the heal all. Knew that was coming eventually. Perfect. And, oh, I was gonna say we got level 17 already, but not quite. We're probably really close. Once we hit level 17, we're going to activate beast mode by taking advantage of a very, very 
stick glitch that will cut the length of the run by like an hour and a half. So sick. Sleepy. crazy. Usually I don't win this many battles without having to death warp. Random dragon killer? <laughs> that doesn't even matter because we have the thunder sword! And it doesn't even kill dragons. It's total, total sham. Yeah, there's level 17. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I don't know what sleep rolls are in this. And how they vary between the hero and enemies. Ow! That hurt. What's the best way to do this? Just... I was gonna say try and YOLO it, but yeah, we're, we're toast now. No problemo. Yeah, Ilani just got yeeted into the stratosphere by that Cyclops. All right. Silver bat boons were minorly doable. Gold bat boons are just like straight up evil. Straight up evil. One is in that direction. All right, we're looking for blizzards and giants. Blizzards, the most bipolar enemy in the game, they either do nothing or try and kill you instantly. One in eight chance on each character every time they cast it to insta kill. Take my thousand experience, thank you very much. Hey, giant! Fantastic. So what we're hoping for here... Giants have a 1 in 8 chance of dropping an item called the Sword of Destruction. And it's the strongest sword in the game, granted, it's cursed. But... We are going to take advantage of a glitch that will essentially remove its curse. Which is pretty boss. So, all for one so far. The sooner we get it, the better. So I think we were at 16,000 experience when we came to Roan, like, 15 minutes ago, and we're already at 23,000. <laughs> mm, well, that's not good. What does Curse Being do? It basically freezes you from moving a certain percentage of the time. We just want to make it to the castle. Please and thanks. Christo, where's Alina? Up and around. Ah, come on, game. <laughs> I want to show off the glitch. 
Oh, we're one step away. No! Good. All right. So, we are going to equip this falcon sword, the item that attacks twice. But you'll notice our attack power dipped down all the way to 66, because it only gives you 5 attack. The thunder sword gives you like 70 attack. But in the castle, everything that happens in here is cancelled when you leave. So when we leave here, the game's gonna be like, oh, you're using the falcon sword, you numb nuts. But it forgets to recalibrate our attack power. So essentially we have the falcon sword merged with the power of the thunder sword. And we are gonna go absolutely to town. Just maybe this will work. Nice! It did work. Sweet. So yeah, look how freaking powerful we are now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Cash 1400 experience. And so this glitch will stay on Unless one of two things happens. One, I go into an equipment menu and the game realizes that I pulled a quick one and recalibrates the attack power. Or if I level up, again, the game's going to compute stat changes and recompute the attack power. So that's the reason I'm just chilling here right now. I'm hoping I can get a level. And then I can just walk right back into the castle and throw the glitch back on again. That's the goal here. Mm, that's... Oh, that's gonna ruin that. Maybe if I get lucky and run into a couple blizzards. Hey, Meekwood, welcome in! Ah, uh, maybe. Nope. <laughs> I'm not gonna waste my time searching for the right encounter that I probably won't find anyway. Alright, so next battle we'll get level 19. Or 18. 18 is a level. Alright, All right, there's... This is strategy at play here. I preemptively cast Heal More on the hero. Oh, that's not gonna work! Because Lars got defeated. Good grief, game. Now Alani got defeated. And then it dodged. And it dodged! Get out of here, you jerk! Alright. Sweet. 1500 experience, but now the glitch is on, and the game realizes it goes back to the previous attack power. So now we have a single attacking thunder sword again until we go back to the castle to apply that glitch. So that is what we will do. We'll try and fight giants and blizzards on the way, see if we can get that Sword of Destruction drop, which would give us an extra 12 attack power. This is a stretch, but I'm going to go for it. I'd do this fight if I had... if I had the glitch on, but in this case it's pretty unlikely. So we need Lars to be a damage sponge. And even parrying, he got one hit KO'd by a critical hit. No problem.
Yeah. If you play this game again, I recommend using this glitch to full effect. Ow. Ow. Okay, it's like 120. Darn, just can't get you to sleep, huh? Nice! Maybe? Ah! Yes! <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Really, the main thing that matters right now is how much experience Maiden Hall gets. Since he is really our major damage dealer. All about progressing him. So, my strategy in these fights relies... Like, if I can keep everyone alive, great. But the priority is keeping on... Keeping Maiden Hall alive. One HP hype. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Right, so we parry, we could probably attack. And all is well. All is well. No sword. But experience. Hey, it's a blizzard. Hi, blizzard. Thanks for casting defense like a bro. Hey! No... Bad. Bad Blizzard. It's gonna be Lars level 16. Key levels that I need uh, is Lars level 17. And he learns Step Guard because I have to pass over a billion barrier tiles. Nice. And then Moonbrook. Ooh, very nice. Moonbrook at level 15 learns Heal All. Good job, team. Yeah, we're actually only 1700 experience from level 19 already. Fantastic. Grind here has been going phenomenally well, in spite of me not having success making it to the castle. Cheap battle, that's not worth it, but I'd rather not get fire being cast on me four times. Keep her moving. Ow. Good. Nice. Nice. Oh yeah. Thousand and ninety-seven experience to go. Now I'm just trying to think if there's any combination of enemies that would give me a thousand and ninety-seven experience. Sure as heck is in this one. Superman Alito, welcome in. Oh. 
Ow. So close to the castle. Ooh, Blizzard Giant. Very nice. I think this would give me the level. <laughs> it would be pretty darn close. It might be that 1097. Surround comes in clutch. Get him! No! Oh no! <laughs> Lars! My buddy! Just doing Lars things. Oh, we're 32 short. <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. I gotta take this. The most valuable fight here, but very likely to kill me. Okay. All right. With every turn, it becomes even more heartbreaking if I get defeated. <laughs> oh, of course. It's funny, I'm probably going to run out of magic here. Man, I just cannot hit that third blizzard. Doesn't matter. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. All right, that's hopefully more reasonable. No, I had no magic left anyway. And Moonbrook can't hit it with physical attacks. I didn't even didn't ever have the glitch on. Ow. Man, Giant A just never wants to be surrounded today. Okay. Everything's fine, nothing is wrong. Lethal. That's a bloody joke. Oh, man. That was a 48 damage physical. I mean, not the end of the world. Dang, that's annoying. <laughs> battles we want to see. And we just hope over time our characters don't die! <laughs> I 
vey. Oy vey. Brutal. One in eights, they're handing them out like candy. Escaped one turn. Sweet. Uh, is that Moonbrook? Nice. So each of my support characters are one level away from their key levels. And then just every extra level gives them buckets more MP. Okay. Well, that didn't work out well. defeating me. <laughs> Alright, it's like that turn never happened. It never happened. Oh, come on, team. Get it together. Alright. Alright. You elusive blizzard. Yeah, I get crit! <laughs> love to see it. You deserve that level up, Lars. That one is all you. Yeah, Lars definitely needed a W. Really had the motivation there. Oh yeah, so in the 30 minutes we've been at Roan, we have officially doubled our experience in the previous 3 hours and 20 minutes. Oh, another preemptive! Come on! Brutal. Alright, we're just gonna... YOLO. Oh, come on, Lars. This is sketchy. Oh my gosh, I did nothing! I literally did nothing that turn. I'm just gonna run. No, I'm not. Jeez Louise, that was brutal. I have to take this. No, no, don't put me to sleep. Okay, we got rid of one. Fantastic. Okay, we're gonna get rid of the second one. Fantastic. No! You kidding me? No, I can't do that. Yeah. Silly game. 
Okay, fell asleep, fell asleep, didn't fall asleep. Uh, I gotta do something. I'm just gonna use the light sword. See, the thing about these gold bat boons is they have a spell called Sacrifice, which instantly kills you if, if it uses it, but it only uses it when it has less than 25% health. So I was trying to stay out of that range, but I think I'm in, right in the middle of it right now. Great. Because I did a high rolling attack. So yeah, by trying to avoid getting into that range, I went directly into it. Because that's just RNG. But no worries. We won the fight. We can put the glitch on. Like, two battles, we level, and hopefully we can put it right back on. Nice. Come on, DQRTA. Get them both! One! Two! Come on. Mm, not quite enough, but the parry saved us! Fantastic. Good thing you didn't hit him for 57 the first time. Alright, let's go. Let's go. There's level 20. We only needed one fight. Fantastic. Alright, let's put that glitch back on. All you have to do, have the falcon sword equipped when you walk into the castle, and then equip another weapon over top of it. That's it. Game forgets to recalculate the attack power. but keeps the falcon sword on. Right, nice. Ow. Ow. All right, that's one down. Right, attack, shield, heal more. Perfect. There's that one. Nice dodge. <laughs> okay, okay, Gold Bat Boon. Okay, I get it. I get it, buddy. You can dodge. Good for you. get on that... get that sort of destruction drop. Cow. No, we gotta just double parry. Just gotta double parry. Alright. Everything's fine. Fantastic. Hey, we got it! Nice! Probably took maybe five fights to get the one in eight. That's fantastic. Right. Now I just gotta make it to the castle. <laughs> so I can get it applied. for that extra bit of attack power. And we made it. So yeah, all we gotta do, again, game still thinks we have the Falcon Sword. Then we curse ourselves, ooh, for 88 extra attack power. And now the curse is gone. Whoa, green giant. 
Is that what you're hoping for? <laughs> All right, did not fall asleep. Good. Go, hero! Uh oh. Oh, there's our sacrifice. And boom goes the dynamite. So something I have to do for the end of the game anyway, I have to turn in my crests to get the Charm of Rubus. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Bum, 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 bum. Right, I don't need to get a leaf. Usually I do because I have to use it on the road to Rome. But miraculously, I didn't need to. best to avoid sacrifice, but with damage ranges, it's unavoidable. We just hope it doesn't happen with Bazuzu. No, no need jinxing it, it already has happened. <laughs> in a Bullwong, my favorite sitcom on NBC. Hey, finally we got one to sleep. Awesome. Alright, and I think I'm just gonna go after the blizzards now. Yeah, with that extra power we can Sometimes one shot these blizzards, which is extremely valuable. Hold on, we'll pop. That's annoying. Well, we're gonna put it back to sleep. And I'll take my 2000 experience. Thank you very much. Oh, you don't just cast return. As long as I don't save, always sends me back there. Alright, so Ilani just learned heal all. That is a good checkpoint. Bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Nice. Light sword. Didn't work. Yeah, it, it's crazy just how quickly you can just absolutely blow through these enemies with this glitch on. saved me there. Yeah, those last two battles, we got 3,800 experience. Easy peasy.
Nice. Keep them coming. Oh, wrong item. I menu too quick. But you have already put on the dragon's bane. Oh, come on. That sucks. Ow. Good. Come on, Lars, get him. Good job, Lars. Beautiful. 5,000 experience. Just like that. We are flying. Boom. Perfect. Preemptive heal works like magic again. Because the hero would get killed by two explodits. Which is the Bullong's most common attack. Every time we beat one of them, we are praying for a 1 in 32 wizard's ring drop. Because MP restore is at a premium in this game. Well, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> and they both missed, that's hilarious. Alright, good. Kill me! Perfect. typical speedrun if I'm doing super gangbuster strats, I would be doing the final dungeon rush at level 20. But I'm going to go up to probably level 23. Because it greatly increases your chance of success. Okay. Boop. Double boop. Who's that now? Oh, it's 21 already! Holy moly, that was quick. That was so quick. But we want to get that glitch back on. ASAP. Or, you know, get encounters every step. That was the alternative. Unfightable encounters every step. So the big thing I'm looking for in these levels, well, a little bit of attack helps in some scenarios, but the HP and MP gains help even more. Uh, the boss we're going to fight, Atlas, he is super powerful and attacks twice a turn. And... Basically, he will attack someone until they die. If that person's the hero, he can basically one round the hero. But at level 23, you start having decent chances of surviving in those cases. Oh yeah, I don't have the glitch on. Right! I am smart. What? Are you going to sacrifice me? No, you're not going to sacrifice. It's only a 25% chance. Come on. Get him, Lars. The only meathead in this game is Lars. Another... Another encounter! Yay! Alright. I'm just gonna double parry, honestly. Then we'll 
parry and heal all. Perfect decision. Again, trying to preserve Maiden Hall at all costs. Right. Go get him. Beautiful. Always feels good when you end a fight at full health. Just means you made maximum use of your turns. I don't know, I think Don Mahoney in Toon, who makes the water flying clothes, and the town who sells the... also sells the uh, falcon sword is the real hero. Like, literally this glitch... If I didn't have this glitch, I would have to go to, like, level 28. Something stupid. Alright, one down. Level 16 for Alani. And we start getting some good MP boost. 12 MP. That 5 HP even matters because if Atlas attacks her and she's parrying, sometimes she will still he will still kill her. Get into the castle right now. If I didn't have the Sword of Destruction, I would contemplate fighting that. But this overrides all of that. 107! Triple digit non critical hit. Damage rolls in this game are very bizarre. So in Dragon Warrior 1, you have like a, a fixed range and everything is equally likely in this range. This game is more like a modified bell curve. So you can get these really weird outliers on the low and the high end. It's just crazy. Like, I hit it for 117, I could randomly hit it for like 40. This should be a breeze. Alright. 95 damage. Oh yeah. Rude. One and two. I get 4,600 experience before my magic runs out? I doubt it, but we are gonna try. Four blizzards would be half of that and cost no magic. Well, four magic, probably. Oh, three blizzards. So close. So close. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Alright, walking around. No, I t game! <laughs> Fine, I'll go down here where there are very few blizzards. There we go. Ba, 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 ba. I don't really 
really want to fight you. I really shouldn't be picky. Da 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 More blizzards! K.O. Our run is going pretty reasonable. There was, I think, the only like super shaky part was on the way to Dune to activate the water gate. I died like three times, which was strange, but not the worst thing that can happen in this run. But otherwise, good. All according to plan. Just getting my bonus levels. Alright. We faded the 25% sacrifice there. And we are 2k away from the next level. everything goes smoothly, I could contemplate taking a run at Atlas at level 22. Also could, you know, potentially kill some metal babbles in the castle. Alright, that's fine. That's very fine. Whoa, 92 damage. Yo. Sleep. Brutal. Brutal. Can't do anything now. Yeah, all right. Oh, I haven't seen these uh, cyclopes in a while. Hi, giant. 69. Eighty-six. He's dead. And I need fifteen forty-two to get level twenty-two. Not good enough here. Oh. Okay. Sleep? No sleep. This should work. Hooray! Six seventy to go. And I barely have enough magic that I can think about doing an Atlas attempt. But we need to get the level before we get in the castle. Hopefully this will do it. Perfect. Perfect damage rolls. <laughs> gotcha. Sweet. Six power, nine HP. Uh, right, so first thing... Anything I do before I break the Mirage is undone. Except for some things. So your HP and MP go back to normal, but spell effects stay. So that step guard will stay even after I break the Mirage. So it's just a free, free MP usage. And like I mentioned, your equipment goes back, but it doesn't recalculate your attack power. So I have my Falcon Sword of Destruction in full effect. So 
we get our one free cast of Step Guard, but every time we go off a damage tile, we have to cast it again. So I have to cast it again here. I have to cast it again. Actually, it's just cheaper to do it this way. Heal is cheaper than Step Guard. And I need to heal you too, I suppose. Alright, so we have to go through two floors of nonsense before we can get to Atlas and roll the dice. What you got? No thanks. So someone was talking about the clowns with Explode It. They are on this floor. They are called Mace Masters. And they are really annoying. The floor also does have metal babbles, though. Alright. So we made it. Now, again, the scouting report on Atlas. He has insane attack power, and he attacks twice, and he has 250 HP. And he will keep attacking the same person until they die. So, a 1 in 3 chance they attack DQRTA. If that happens, the fight is over, we lose. If it's one of the other two, we have a chance. So what we do is we fight with Maidenhall and we parry. Try and absorb these attacks, which again, didn't happen. There's a small chance we'll be okay, but probably not. So we're gonna do... Uh, what's the best play here? I think, if I'm really serious about this, I will do this. I need both my characters to go first. Oh, that didn't work either. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. Didn't work. Come on, man. Okay, surround worked. Now we need him to start missing. Okay. That's good. Uh, it's a 25% chance to miss. Uh, so what's the best play here? Try and cast defense to see if we can get this over in three turns. Miss! Ah, oh, it didn't happen. Shoot. So, I tried the best I could in this situation. Just needed to get through one more turn. Oh, Shiner, Heal War could only heal like 30, 35. At least on the overworld. Okay. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Come on, stop with the sleep breath. Stop with the sleep breath. Ya yeah, goofs. Yep, you can heal for more than a heal more. Okay. Right. Good. Right. Ah! Bummer. Right, now you've made me very angry. I've been getting some trash um, sleep rolls in this run. Right. 
Take him out, Lars. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I had a lot of turn order work in my favor just to make it that far in the Atlas fight. The one thing that kind of was my downfall, I couldn't stall more because of my... Um, because I was running out of magic. That's ultimately what, what did me in. Kill it, that's crazy. Nice. Surround putting in work. Beautiful. Right. Let's continue leveling. Yeah, so had I been level 21, I would have never had that opportunity even on Atlas. The fight would have just been over turn one. And if I'm going to make an attempt at the boss rush, I want to just make sure my resources are full. That Bullwong had a brand new cow. That Bullwong is a cow. Just a purple cow. Hmm. Hello, friends. Hey, Twitch Pop! Twitch Pop Sun, thank you very much. Miss, miss, hit, hit. All right. Jeez, that is that is some pain from the blizzards. One turn party wipe. All right. Shield. Nice. That makes my life easier. I call this the Bulwon Forest. <laughs> it's coming. True. Nice. Sleepy bye. Go get him, Lars. Kill it. Lame. Ay, ay, ay. Brutal. Take a hundred and one to the face. <laughs> mm. 
One time? Nope. They're handing out one and eights like candy again. <laughs> oh, this is such a bizarre, bizarre, bizarre run. Okay. That just happened. We are feeling some serious pain here. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm still... The thing is, I'm still fighting along the way because I could get walled for another hour and a half. And by fighting stuff, it makes it a lot, lot harder to get walled. So I'm still going to fight reasonable battles. And my goal isn't to crush Estimate, my goal is to be close to Estimate. It's like, I could win in 15 minutes, maybe. I guess that wouldn't even be that bad, would it? Half hour under Estimate. Okay. Nice. just to make sure I can beat the game. Right now I'm having a hard time getting to the dang castle. That's my main problem. That's why I attacked with Lars. Jeez. Oh, man. So many bullwongs. Credit! times I'll get a wizard's ring drop. <laughs> One of these days. sort of destruction drop. We don't get another one because we already have one. Go get him, hero. Oh, right. I'm going to be so close to level 23 that I will get my level up before I'm done all the bosses, so that's no good. But since I'm here, I still have to try. Think. Think, think, think. Well, that's no good. the crit. <laughs> Better late than never. Right. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Nice. 
Nice. Double surround. Sweet. Gotcha. All right, there's level 23. Perfect. Perfect. Alright, so if I'm doing this seriously, I need to give the hero the water flying clothes. There they are. Alright, so that, water flying clothes. And then Kanak, where's the magic armor? Great! Go in the castle, get our free step guard. Sword of Destruction, and Armor of Erdrick actually gives us five extra defense power. Same concept. I did this right. Doing it again can't hurt. We get the magic back anyway. 31, 29, 23 sounds right. I mean, having Moonbrook with Explode It and Canic with Revive makes such a huge difference. Actually, getting through these two floors with Kanak alive is kind of a challenge. Alright. Nice, that helps me so much. That helps so much. Basically, I fight that just out of necessity. If I fail to run, Canuck's dead. Oh, hi, Metal Babble. Darn. <laughs> Make sure to kill the serious enemy first. I can one-hit KO a Metal Babble now. Excellent. <laughs> That's funny. Good luck. Ooh, I'm at I am at max. For some reason I thought my max HP was higher. Atlas still could one round the hero with reasonable rolls slightly above average. Alright. Let's hope we don't get one in three again. Eighty-six. Good. Lars is best case scenario. And we're in dodge territory. So that's 130. Good. 174. 202. And I'm just going to let him die. Because he's no longer useful. Really, he's not. Okay. Uh, 
and we want to give you the Shield of Strength. So that really is one of the biggest wall fights of the game. See, if I'm gonna be serious about beating the game, I need all the magic I can get. Hmm. Rude. I fell asleep, thanks. He will not fall asleep, that's very sketchy. There we go, we're fine. He could have cast Sacrifice at any point after the second turn. So that is mini boss number two. Uh, now mini boss number three. Oh, increase is fantastic. Free turn for me. That's 120. 159. Ah, shit. You jerk. My apologies. <laughs> Shoot. 93. Scorching flames are great. 139. 195. So, next turn would do it. One more hit. Great. Fantastic. Alright. Uh -huh. Trying to decide what the best course of action here is. <laughs> Preemptive by Hargon, but he passed the spell of sleep. Wow, twice. That's that's fantastic. 40. 99. That's pretty good. I think we go for it. 145. Nah, we got him! <laughs> Two rounder! Let's go! Fantastic. I'm just gonna... I'm casting Shield of Strength on the first turn, anyway. I don't think a physical would kill me. By that rock. <laughs> oh, game double preemptive. That's hilarious. All right, twenty eight, fifty two. Good, that's great. Now we're stabilized. All right. 25, 51. Defense didn't work. 77, 102. Okay, that was super lucky. Defense didn't work again. 136, 162, and back to zero. Gross. Okay, free turn. Love it. Love it. 31. 66. Free turn. Ah, game. Okay, now we're gonna do serious damage. 84. 134. 185. Heal all again. He has, like, no defense left. 58, dodge, and knocked me up. And I'm still asleep. Fantastic. 
Oh man, this is brutal. Okay, we're still fine. 66, 135. 283. Not often the hero gets put to sleep and you still win. And that right there is the power of the Sword of Destruction. We were doing 140 damage to Malroth that turn. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Pretty much on 444 44. So since we're just a touch early here, we get to do bonus content. Y'all ready for bonus content? So, in this game, there is a whole, well, small-scale replica of Alico. And it's not actually necessary for the plot of the game. So we're, we're headed to Alico right now. Let's go. What's up with the mic? Is anything wrong? Okay, it's the restream. Okay. My apologies. All right. Now I have to remember the way to get to Sherlock. So we've got the Swamp Cave right here. There's Sherlock, there's Tanagil Castle. So Sherlock is just straight up dungeon. So we're gonna walk through here and you find the Dragon Lord's grandson at the bottom and basically two um, TLDR it. He basically says like, hey, we should team up. This Hargon guy is like putting my family to shame. And you're like, okay, sure, whatever. But then you see him after the game. He's like, hey, good job, buddy. Good job. All right, so what would a run be without getting Erdrick's sword, huh? This is the right way to do it. Left for Lord, down for Sword? This seems right. Yes? No? Yes? Hey, there we go. <laughs> we found the Sword of Erdrick. It's actually terrible in this game, which is funny. I'm not sure if that is another one of yours, Spark Over, but I learned that from Arcus. Yeah, Kanek can equip it. Well, Kanek can equip it in this game, but it's still not better than the Iron Spear. Oh, can you not equip it in this? If so, then I'm, I'm just straight up mistaken, and that's mine. My bad. Okay. Well, yeah, Arcus just steals all your things, Spark Over, like Pig Fence. Am I right? Alright, so here we got the Dragon Lord. Thou hast done well, DQRTA. Let bygones be bygones, and we shall be friends. Fantastic. So, we, we patched everything up. That's, that's the end of the era. Argon's taken care of, Malroth is taken care of, and the Dragon Lord is taken care of. Now I have to figure out the quickest way back home. This is probably pretty quick. Yes, we got our lovely post-game content. Let's just walk this way. 
Oh, is this the way to Hamlin? <laughs> Whoops. Uh, no, return spell takes you to the last place you saved. If I cast return, it would take me right back to Roan. Funny, it would probably still be the fastest way. <laughs> but no, we're, we're basically home. You do not get to pick your return point in this. I mean, I actually don't know... I don't know what everybody says here. I wonder what the... the King of Canuck says. Once again, the line of Erdrick has proven true. Lar is my heir, thou hast gained a great victory, and I am proud of thee. To thy new duties must thou go now, DQRTA. Yeah, picking where to return, that'd be fantastic. Oh man, when I was practicing, Lars actually survived the Malroth fight, and that's like the first time I've ever had that happen. It's a shame. It's a shame it couldn't happen in the marathon. Alright, back home we go! Well, it has been absolutely fantastic to do this, y'all. Absolutely fantastic. This is a uh, full showcase of what Dragon Warrior 2 is all about. For a marathon, 450 is a great time for me. Super cool. Oh, thanks all. That was a lot of fun. I don't know the words to this, but we all have to sing this song. It's something in Japanese, but I don't know any words. It's really confusing, so I should draw. But we learn them soon. <laughs> yeah, that th that is the English translation. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> awesome. Oh. And the best part is, I didn't have to go to the bathroom. the task coming next, don't we? Now you can see <laughs> if you could control all the RNG in this game, just how this fast this can go. So, even if you miss this run, you can still see a task run and see this game get the punishment it deserves. Yeah, if you're, if you're ever interested in, like, Ever dabbling in speedrunning, or as I like to call it, my philosophy is speed walking. Uh, I can just tell you all sorts of things you can do based on what your goal is for the game. So, yeah, feel free to ever, ever give me a shout. I love talking about the different strategies in this game. And pretty much any Nest Dragon Warrior for that matter. <laughs> Yeah. That is that in a nutshell. So if the, uh, I guess the admins want to let me know when we're heading to the break screen, 
I can get it passed over. Thanks so much, everybody.